Hi everyone, I'm True Soul, and this is my Star Wars Black Series haul video. So yeah guys, in case you guys watched my last Star Wars Black Series update video, you know that my current plan is to, every month or so, uh, do a video where I go over my latest uh, Star Wars Black Series action figures that I collected. And so for this one, since I got literally all these figures like within days of each other, I decided to not only talk about them all, but unbox them here as well. So it's going to be kind of like a mini unboxing review kind of thing, but I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail with a whole lot of them because some of them are very old figures that Black Series has made. Some of them are kind of new, especially this one over here, but we're going to talk a little bit about that later. So let's go ahead and get started, and we're going to start off with this one over here, the Trapper Wolf action figure. Okay guys, so one thing that I think is kind of nifty about this uh, packaging is it literally has like a little slide out thing where you can slide out and you can actually see the action figure in there. I actually think that's really cool. but. In order to properly get a good look at the figure, I'm going to have to open it up. So here we go. Okay, Hasbro, there's no point in having Trapper Wolf be that well packed in that box. That was kind of ridiculous what I had to go through to get him out. But here he is guys, Trapper Wolf in all his Dave Filoni glory. I thought it was so funny that uh, Dave Filoni was able to incorporate himself into the Mandalorian as an actual character. So, I think that's really cool. Now, you probably think there's not a whole lot to see here. I mean, this is pretty much a, a pilot body that we've uh, seen before. I did think that it looked a little bit different, so I got my pilot Luke uh, action figure here to kind of compare. And for the most part, Except for like a few like changes to the uh, costume, maybe like the coloration of like the uh, straps and stuff hanging down, and maybe a slightly different shade of orange, you're pretty much getting the same deal uh, with uh, this uh, Trapper Wolf that you are with like a Pilot Luke. Same articulation and everything too, for the most part. But we're gonna go ahead and go over his articulation anyway but before I get ahead of myself I really like see if it'll zoom in there I really like uh, the lightness that they got for Dave Filoni now some people might be a little bit you know nitpicky but I think for the most part it does look like Dave Filoni I only wish that I could like find like a little cowboy hat to put on his head to really complete the look I think that would be kind of funny but going on articulation real quick since we uh, you know, our good friend Dave doesn't have a whole bunch of hair to hand articulation. He has pretty good articulation. He has the hinge and the head and can get a little bit of tilt out of that, but not a whole lot. 360 on the head there. Has hinge in uh, the top part of the arm and single joint, like mostly all people with a pilot look body have. Also has what I believe, I'm not really sure if that's a ball joint in there because it really mostly just hinges forward and backward. So I think there's just like a hinge in that one. Of course does have some swivel in the upper thigh, double jointed legs, swivel at the top of the boot, and of course he has hinge and swivel in the ankle with that good old ankle pivot. Now one thing that I really like about this Trapper Wolf is the accessories that he comes with and first of all I want to talk about his helmet. Now looking at this action figure in the packaging I noticed very quickly that his helmet has a symbol of a wolf which if any of you guys think that looks familiar is because it is the same wolf symbol that uh, Commander Wolf and his uh, clone wolf pack have. There we go. Now bring that down and <laughs> there you go guys. Trapper Wolf pilot for the new Republic. Let me see if I can make him stand by himself because 
some of his joints are a little loose and that might be on me because I was a little rough trying to get him out of that ridiculous packaging but he also comes with what I consider to be a standard uh, Rebel uh, blaster rifle. These blaster rifles look very similar to the ones that come with the uh, the Hoff Trooper. I'm gonna go ahead and try to fit it into his hand here. See how it looks. And there you go, guys. Rifle seems to fit in his hand pretty well. And there you go. I really do like these blaster rifles. So knowing that Trapper Wolf comes with one. Uh, Definitely makes me uh, happier because I thought I was just going to have to just keep army building uh, Hoff troopers until I got a whole bunch of them. So, yeah, you know, I'm probably going to display Trapper Wolf with this rifle because that was pretty cool. Reminds me of the scene where they went to save Mando from those ice spiders. All around, really nice figure, even though it's mostly a bunch of reuse, except for, you know, the Dave Filoni face and the cool looking helmet. But, Still a good figure to add to my Mando collection, to my uh, Mando shelf, considering the fact that I have next to no extra figures on that shelf. Uh, the next figure that we're going to be looking at, guys, is the Star Wars Black Series uh, Captain Phasma. Now, these um, Force Awakens figures, obviously, they came out back when uh, Force Awakens was just coming out. And at the time, I wasn't really digging a lot of the sequel characters so I didn't really bother buying a whole lot of them after a while uh, they did kinda start growing on me a little bit and I did think that Captain Phasma's uh, silver chrome armor did look kinda cool I just wasn't in a big hurry to purchase her so way later on down the line I noticed that a lot of the sequel toys you can buy them like super cheap on like eBay I got this Captain Phasma for like 10 bucks in a, in a bid on eBay and uh, I don't know I guess maybe a lot of people just don't really care for them which that's perfect for me because that makes it a lot easier for me to hunt these guys down now so we're gonna go ahead and take Cat Phasma right out of the packaging so much easier to get her out of the packaging as opposed to Phas not Phasma as opposed to Trapper Wolf I had to fight a literal war to get him out of but just Captain Phasma standing here she looks pretty good guys I wanted to do a quick size comparison so I got one of my first order stormtroopers here definitely taller than the stormtroopers as she's supposed to be I think she's around the same height as uh, Chewbacca I might do a little height comparison a little later looks like uh, she wants him to submit uh, his weapon for inspection but I really do like uh, the look of this uh, deco that they got for the armor um, I noticed that the cape is a kind of hard plastic piece as opposed to a cloth piece I mean it still looks cool and I'm probably not gonna be having Cat Phasma get into a lot of you know crazy poses or anything mostly just her holding her blaster that she has here so even though maybe in the long run this cape might end articulation uh, and it doesn't seem like you can take it off possibly you can pop off Cat Phasma head, uh, Cat Phasma's head and take that off if you want to but I'm gonna leave that on there because mostly I just wanted someone to lead my first order troops into battle but real quick let's go into articulation here now her head articulation is hindered because of the cape but she can look down a good bit and she has some pretty good tilt in the head um, the arms, as you can see, the shoulder pad actually doesn't hinder articulation too much, kind of like with the uh, other First Order Troopers. I always thought that the articulation for the First Order Troopers was pretty well done. Has a single joint in the arm and also has a hinge in the blaster uh, hand, as well as a, what looks to be a swivel in there too. It looks a little different. For a minute there, it looked like the... There was a ball joint right here, but that's actually not a ball joint, guys. Um, also have, whoa, next to the, the guys, I'm trying to move the torso. I don't think there's any articulation in there. It looks like there is. Oh, it was just stuck, guys. There is articulation in there. <laughs> it's just, this toy hasn't been moved in years, but there's a little bit of, uh, a little bit of, uh, 
movement in the torso here and um the bottom torso is not a separate piece so you cannot move that but she does all uh, have some swivel in the upper thigh even though that's a little stiff as well with double jointed knees and she has no swivel in the lower part because that's not a separate part that's all connected right here so then again I don't know why you would want to move that around but she does have hand swivel in the ankle with that good old pivot pretty okay articulation it could be better but for what I need it for is perfectly fine for me and now moving on to uh, Captain Phasma's blaster here I really like the color that they have on it um it kind of just looks like a slightly altered souped up version of a standard uh, stormtrooper blaster now she can hold it pretty decently without you know oh never mind usually guys um with a lot of my stormtroopers some of them have a little trouble having a good firm grip on the blaster so i ended up using like small like kind of clear translucent rubber bands because if you guys can notice i actually have one on this guy and what i do is i wrap it around their hand and their blaster so they can actually keep it in their hand there that's like a pretty decent default blaster pose i'm probably just gonna keep phasma like this now i need a i need a, one of those uh stormtrooper armored fins so she can you know ask him to submit his weapon for inspection <laughs> all around long overdue to get this one um i find it funny how i've been collecting quite a good bit of first order stormtroopers but i didn't have you know their captain to tell them what to do and lead them into battle you know so another good addition to my uh first order shelf that i'm working on oh all right guys moving on to my next figure my star wars power of the force greedo in the early days of Star Wars Black Series, Greedo was one of the action figures that they released. And um, they did release him a couple of other times in recent memory, but not a whole lot. And sometimes when I tried to pre-order him, he ended up selling out. But I finally got one here. And for those of you, before you even start, I don't care about packaging. So I'm just going to rip this guy open and, so we can start the review. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, Greedo out of the packaging. Now, right off the bat, I want to say that I really like this, like, dusty kind of paint uh, deco that they used for Greedo. He looks like he just came out of the deserts of Tatooine. Very dusty, really, you know, realistic look. Um, it's been a while since I've watched A New Hope, so I'm not sure if it's exactly accurate to how he looked in that movie. But... He looks pretty cool in my book. It's been a while, because I I really did want to get a Greedo to go with my, my other bounty hunters, but, you know, it's been t it's took me a while to get one. But now I finally have one right here. And we're going to go ahead and go into articulation real quick. Now, he doesn't have a whole lot of up and down tilt. I guess with the, the way the shape of his head and his head kind of hits the back of his collar right here, but you can get 360, and there's a little, well, actually, there's next to no tilt in the head either. Man. <laughs> but, um, does have 360 on the shoulders and double joint on the arms. He has a hinge in, uh, I think he has a hinge in both of his hands, the trigger hand and the regular hand, as also with a swivel in there, so that's good. Um, not a whole lot of movement in the torso. You can turn it so there is some swivel, but not, you can't really hinge it up and down that much. Let's see, he can set all the way down. That's something, I, I used to check to see if my action figures could set all the way down, because I know a lot of them couldn't do it, but Greedo here can do that. Also, seems to have some upper, there he goes again. Oh, guys, he does have, uh, some swivel in the upper thigh, as well as double dry legs uh, he can almost kick his own butt but um and also has hinge and swivel and the ankle and that good old ankle pivot and for accessories Greedo comes with his little insignificant blaster that he couldn't uh, kill Han Solo with even though some people say 
that he shot first. And it fits into his hand pretty well. I do wish that it, uh, his hands uh, hinged up and down instead of left and right. That seems a little odd because I know a lot of Star Wars figures that have blaster hands can hinge up and down, but uh, Greedo can't. But I guess it doesn't matter because he's not going to get to use his gun anyway because he's going to get gunned down. But overall, another alien from my collection, another character for my original trilogy, uh, New Hope slash a bunch of other stuff shelf, which I'll be showing you guys at the end of this video. But let's go ahead and move on to the next action figure, which is also an alien. Guys, I'm kind of craving some bacon now because we're moving on into the Star Wars Black Series Gamorrean Guard. Uh, this is a deluxe action figure that I've been wanting to get for quite a long time. I was originally going to buy him off of um, Big Bad Toy Store, but Amazon had a better deal. And since I had Amazon Prime, didn't have to pay shipping. Woohoo. So let's go ahead and get this bad boy open and uh, see what he's all about. Here he is guys, the Gamorrean Guard out of his packaging. He was a little bit harder to get out. They had him kind of strapped down in there. Can't keep this big brute in a box. But guys, I did not notice just how chunky this <laughs> Gamorrean Guard action figure was. Which I mean, it makes sense because I mean, the Gamorreans were pretty big and buff in the movie in uh, Return of the Jedi. So it does make sense for them to be pretty big and bulky in action figure form. I do like the feel of this cloth that the Gamorrean Guard has. I thought it was very interesting of them to use um, uh, actual cloth fabric piece as opposed to like sculpting it with plastic. But you could also argue that that uh, helps the articulation. And this cloth piece, it seems like it's fastened into the action figure, so it's not gonna be moving around a whole lot or getting kinda you know, to where it looks kind of awkward on the figure. Um, this also gives me a chance to really look at the, the intricate details of the Gamorrean Guard. I'm really digging the armor. Almost looks like he's some type of <laughs> pig viking. So I think that looks kind of cool. I'm digging the strap that he has on here, which uh, seems to be a separate piece. So for whatever reason you'd like to remove that, you can go right ahead and do that. The horns, the, the big teeth, it's just really cool looking Gamorrean Guard. I might just have to get another one, but we'll discuss that later. Let's go ahead and get into the articulation. And this Gamorrean Guard actually has pretty decent articulation. He has a decent hinge in the uh, head also. Whoa, okay, not very much tilt. I mean, that armor, not that armor, but his clothes do kind of get in the way of the head movement. But the fact that he has that uh, ball joint in the torso definitely helps him get a better uh, range of motion out of that. So that kind of makes up for the lack of articulation in the head. Arms can go about this far up, are a little hindered by the shoulder armor. Whoa, look at the angle on that single joint. That's actually really good for a single joint. I know a lot of people don't really like single joints, but when you do a single joint good, when you get a decent enough groove in there to where you can get the arm up, I mean, single joints can be pretty good. And he has uh, his diaper underneath here. <laughs> uh, the top of the legs are a little bit stiff, but if you can see, he does actually have swivel in the upper part up here. Double jointed up. Uh, knees, a hinge, and the ankle along with a pivot. So pretty decent articulation for a big chunky character like the Gamorrean Guard. And moving into accessories guys, he comes with uh, three melee weapons. He comes with two different kinds of axes here, uh, like a single bladed axe and then this kind of more weirder looking one. That's always really nice. And he comes with this interesting looking staff now this kind of makes me want to get another Gamorrean guard even more so I can you know display different Gamorrean guards holding different weapons so he's got you know a staff here and you can you know use the other hand to hold like a, an axe or something and then you have an extra weapon almost so you know if you, maybe if you want to give that to some other character that's like a you know, uses melee weapons, maybe a Tusken Raider, maybe a Knight Brother. There you go. 
always nice to have some uh, melee accessories. And in the end, guys, I'm really glad that I finally got around to getting this Gamorrean guard. He's going to look so nice on my uh, Return of the Jedi shelf. He's going to look even better when I finally get my um, Palace Guard Disguise Lando and my Bib Fortuna. So really looking forward to seeing how that looks on the shelf, guys. All right, guys, it's time for the final figure in my action figure haul. The 50th anniversary Power of the Force, Princess Leia, Yavin 4. Guys, I've actually been wanting them to make this action figure for a while. Ever since I got Yavin Ceremony Luke, I was like, I would love to have like a Yavin Ceremony Leia to like, you know, give Luke his medal. So let's go ahead and open up the princess here and see what she's all about. And here she is guys, Princess Leia Organa and all her Carrie Fisher brilliance guys really like the head sculpt on this action figure. It seems like with like the Princess Leia's, they keep getting better and better with the head sculpts every time they release one. And I know they're supposed to be releasing a, I think like Ewok Village Princess Leia at some point. So that's going to be kind of cool. To see how they do uh, Carrie Fisher's likeness on that. Um, I did notice that what I originally thought was a cape in the movies is actually some type of very weird elongated sleeve thing. And I think that the fabric that they decided to use for it is very interesting because uh, it's a lot lighter, uh, softer, and it uh, droops down a lot better on the figure as opposed to the cloth part that they used down here it would have been interesting to, if they used the same fabric that they used with this maybe the dress might actually flow a little bit better but digging the white princess leia always seems more i don't know princess leia like in white i guess it's because when we first see her she's wearing a white dress too so really dig this look for leia also digging the uh I guess the necklace that she has? Yeah, necklace looks pretty good. The belt, I believe, is a separate piece, kind of like um, the uh, A New Hope action figure. And I actually think if you want to, you can pop that off. I'm not going to pop um, that off of this one. I was actually thinking of possibly getting another... Uh, Ceremony Leo because I did have a custom idea That's not all the way to fruition yet, so But we'll talk about that later. Let's go ahead and get into the articulation Now Princess Leia's head articulation is a little hindered because of her long braided hair That almost rivals Bianca Belair, but her hair is longer But <laughs> You can get some decent tilt on the figure and she can look down quite a bit not up a whole lot but that's fine now the these cloth pieces these long cloth pieces are actually separate pieces that will actually move with the arm you can do like 360 on there but I kind of don't want to move the arms too much because I'm worried that it might mess up the cloth you know and I want that to stay in place because the way they have it on there, it looks like really good with the way they have it on there. As usual, well, maybe not as usual, because I know some female action figures have like movement in the torso, but Princess Leia doesn't have any movement in the torso. She does have a, I believe to be a swivel in the lower part of the torso. My apologies, Princess. Has double jointed legs, and what I believe, please don't demonetize me, has a upper swivel in the leg which oh yep she does it's just really stiff I don't know why that this um, swivel joint for a lot of action figures is always so stiff but you're probably not going to be using that because Princess Leia is wearing a dress so there's really no point in moving that at all I never noticed that Leia had high heels in that scene I don't know if you could really see it in the movie but there you go. She has some nice silver, silver slippers there. 
she does come with one accessory, that being another medal to give to Han. I got my uh, Endor Han here because he looks more like the one at the end of the movie. And you can just put that right around Han's neck there. There you go. Han getting a medal, just like Luke. And no medal for Chewie. There we go. But yeah guys, I actually really like um, this Leia action figure. Unlike the other ones that I uh, have gotten, well, other than maybe the Gamorrean Guard, this is a, I guess you could say a new action figure. I'm pretty sure there is some reuse here. But for the most part, an all new extra figure. I did notice a little bit of scuffage here on the arm. I'll just probably use a magic eraser and get rid of that. Thank God for magic erasers. But guys, I was actually thinking of, and this is a very delicate operation because I could very well mess up this figure. Well, you see the uh, seam right here? I was actually thinking of separating that seam for a little bit of, of uh, leg exposure so she'll kind of look like how she did on that super iconic A New Hope poster. You guys know the one I'm talking about. I'll show it to kind of get that look because there is, you know, I kind of there's a certain kind of display that I'm kind of trying to get for my New Hope shelf and I might be able to do that with this lip. If I mess up, then all is lost. But all around, really great figure. I'm starting to have, <laughs> starting to worry that I'm gonna end up having an army of Leia's because when the Endor Leia comes, well not the Endor Leia, the Ewok Village Leia comes out, I'm definitely gonna be getting that. And I don't know if they're ever going to re-release, um, what's, what are they calling her now? They're calling her Hut Slayer Leia now. Let's call her that, guys. I don't know if they're ever gonna re-release that one. But if they do, I'm gonna have to get that one too so she can choke Jabba which I also don't have. <laughs> but yeah, guys, really great figure. Glad I got it. So in the end, guys, these are all very great figures. I'm glad that I picked up each and every one of these ones. I'm kind of having a hard time deciding which ones, uh, which one out of these five is my favorite. Um, I don't know. I. I know I really like the Gamorrean Guard because he's a really unique uh, action figure. There's not really a whole lot of Star Wars Black Series action figures that look quite like him. But at the same time, I've been anticipating this Yavin Ceremony Leia, so there's a little bias there. So I'm probably either going to have to give it to the Yavin Ceremony Leia or the Gamorrean Guard. But as promised, let's go ahead and take these guys to the shelf and see how they look. So here is, once again, my Mandalorian shelf, and now I'm adding Trapper Wolf to it. I know I don't really have a lot of villains, that's why these Stormtroopers are just chilling here, but yeah. Looking pretty good. Still got a long way to go with this Mando shelf, but filling it up bit by bit, so it's coming along. Now I've added Captain Phasma to my first order shelf. I was gonna add her to just like my sequel shelf, but my sequel shelf is so small and I thought she would look better with other stormtroopers. So really nice there. This one's still pretty small. I still need to get a couple more like this default um, first order stormtroopers and I wanna get a, um, they're the special like elite infantry stormtrooper that they made a while like a while back I still want to get at least one of those because he comes with a lot of weapons and stuff guys so definitely gonna be trying to get that at some point so I got Greedo now and I got the Avon Samurai Leia pair front I think this one has just become my favorite Leia action figure it's a very elegant action figure and looks great with the rest of my figures and last but not least, the Gamorrean Guard for my Return of the Jedi shelf. This shelf is also pretty small, so I think I did a good job at getting figures that, you know, are needed for my display shelves at the moment. Still got a lot to do with these clones. I need to get way more clones, but we're not here to talk about that right now. So guys, I really hope that you enjoyed my little uh, unboxing uh, action figure video. 
be sure to comment down below which one of the action figures I showed today are your favorite and be sure to follow me on my Instagram. You'll stay updated whenever I plan to upload a video as well as see exclusive photos like of these figures here that you won't see in my videos. Alright guys, until then, be sure to like, subscribe, and go to my channel to check out other videos. Catch you later.